on Twitch. There we go. I think we are live. Looks stable enough. Cool. Right. Uh, chat. Let me just reopen the chat real quick and we can start with this. Um, pop out, please. Go to the right. There we go. Okay. Good. I think we're good. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes, we can just uh, go ahead and start. So hi everyone, how's it going team here? And uh, this is another live stream about uh, for data science with JavaScript. Um, and uh, you know, we built all the processing services. We've built our enrichment service and obviously the inputs and we got our storage service. So now it's time to actually uh, visualize the data, right? So we need to uh, display it somehow. And for that, we're going to build the REST API that will uh, actually give out the data and we're going to build the user interface. Um, some of you guys was interested in uh, investigating Vue.js. So I guess that's what we're going to be using for um, UI, right? Because we already did React and it's boring to do the same thing all over and again. So we're going to try Vue.js. Um, so let me have a look there. Uh, so since I really like the Next.js approach, we're going to try the same app uh, or the same framework, but for Vue.js, it's called Nuxt, uh, or I'm not sure if you read it Nuxt or Nuxt. Uh, but basically, you know, it's exactly the same thing as Next.js, but with a uh, view in the backend, but it adds, it has a bit more features. So there's like some additional things. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and um, create a folder called UI here. I'm gonna CD into it, so do npm uh, init minus y, get our um, file, um, like the package JSON there, right? So we're gonna um, end that, close all this stuff. Probably should disable those. I mean, I don't really use them all that much. So um, data science UI project, um, let's call it this way, I guess. Right, and uh, starting from scratch. So I don't really want to use the template and view command line because you know I don't really like command line interfaces. So whatever, I think it should work the same way as uh, Next.js does. So we are gonna start from scratch. So uh, dev, we are gonna say dev nuxt, right? And um, yarn add nuxt. Whoops, not next. Thank you very much. We're going to install Nuxt.js. Uh, hopefully, it's going to work properly. Okay, they're using Babel presets ES 2015, which is outdated. Now, the question is which version does it actually use? Because they have like 1.0 something. Um, why, why is the package JSON not updated? I am very confused. Ah, there we go. RC11. Yeah, that looks. That looks like the latest one. Why are they using the old? Are they waiting on? A, I mean, one thing might be that they're waiting on the next Babel. I think it's Babel 7, which will come out pretty soon with uh, quite a lot of really cool stuff coming up. So really excited about that. Under development, it will be released soon. And we want to release this list. Um, yeah, RC11 seems to be the latest one. Okay, whatever. You know, I mean, it's it's old preset, but it works. So, you know, not terrible. Um, Okay, we need to make their pages. And uh, let's do, yes, index view. Why are you not updating stuff? There you go. I'm gonna say index view, uh, the Tor extension. Uh, all right. That is actually pretty cool that VS Code now suggests extensions for stuff that it doesn't know how to work with. I, um, I've been writing view code, but I've been writing it in a slightly different way. So basically I've used Vue.js before, not with the whole like view templates and you know, Nuxt or anything like this. The main advantage of Vue is that you can just throw it in and um, using like the script tag and then it just works. So it's really, really uh, well suited for small demos when you need to, you know, quickly do a one pager or something like this. Okay, so let's throw in a template here. And uh, I guess we do yarn dev. And we should be able so I'm going to open another 
uh, dev version of a browser here, I guess localhost 8080 or ah, 3000, okay. 1000, hello world, hey, it works. Uh, does it have the hot reload? Yes, it does, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna open the inspect here so that we can actually see what's going on. Let me make it larger for you, there we go. So there's a fav icon missing. View dev tools, uh, sure, why not? Let's get the view dev tools. You know, I mean, dev tools are always great to have. Um, right, how do I get them? File, blah, 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 blah. Get the Chrome extension, that's what I want. Thank you very much. So I just have this, uh, another Chrome profile. If you've seen, I've, come on. I have like the, my main one and then I have the dev one. So dev one uh, contains, um, let me show you a bunch of extensions that I use for development, like, you know, the Postman, JSON, React Dev Tools. Because you don't really want to lo like have them always on in your main browser because they eat a lot of memory, you know, and when I'm browsing stuff, I don't really need them. So, okay, I guess I need to restart the... Um, there we go. There's now a view Dev Tools. Uh, it's detected view. There's components. You Oh, that's... That's actually very nice looking dev tools. Okay, props to that. Right, so we got that. Um, here's the question. Uh, does it, so I, I'm basically the, um, uh, okay, it opens stuff here, which I, oh no, it's closed my Twitch, Twitch tab. God damn it. Okay, that's my screw up. Let me just quickly reopen that. Uh, meanwhile, I'm basically thinking right now whether um, I should have a REST API as a separate thing or is it something that is a part of a Nuxt server. Let me pop up the chat again. Come on, chat. Wish there was a simpler way of doing this. This is slightly annoying. Okay, there we go. All right. Yeah, so basically the question is, uh, do we just put the REST API inside of Nuxt or do we actually uh, create a separate project for that? And... Uh, this directory structure, there's directories and aliases, uh, static files. I guess better solution would be to create another thing, right? So, okay. Oh, you can have a uh, subroots, it seems. That is very nice. This is a thing that I've been actually missing. Um, there's a dynamic roots even with uh, prefix by underscore. So this is one of, this is like the things that I've been missing in Next.js, basically where you have to set up your own um, express server, you know, whatever that handles that and reroutes it to Next.js, which is kind of annoying because this is, you know, this is stuff that you normally need in like 99% of projects. It's really cool they have that. There is, oh, they even have nested roots. Okay, this is awesome. Okay, I'm digging it so far. Okay, views, the sync data, assets, plugins. Let's see what do they have as plugins. Uh, view plugins. Okay, those are just basically plugins that you can install, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. Modules. What are modules? Uh, extend core functionality. Okay. Um, yeah, I get, okay. Those are basically extensions for the server side. We don't need that. There, Vuex store. Um, next, we'll look for the store directory. If it exists, it will. Import Vuex, add Vuex. So, okay, we do need a store, I guess, at some point, but we can read into that a bit later. Um, all right, so basically we need um, another project that will be a REST interface, right? So I'm going to size of the text here. I'm going to create another folder, um, REST, and we're going to go inside it, do npm init minus y, open a code here. And uh, I guess we are gonna use Fastify because why the hell not? You know, I've been uh, wanting to try it for some time now. Seems like a basically more more modern and faster alternative to Express.js. So that's a cool thing to try. Right, uh, yarn at Fastify. And uh, in this case, um, what we actually need is to um, start all our infrastructure and generate some test data, right? Because what we don't really have any database right now. So we might as well start with that. So I'm gonna, gonna open another tab here. Before we actually start working on uh, UI and database, we need um, to have that database or REST UI, I guess, to the uh, REST UI. What am I saying? 
on the REST interface. So we need to first build a database that will actually contain some sort of results that we can work with. Now, um, the easiest way to do that would be to start all the services and then trigger uh, work, right? So the problem, at least there are a bunch of problems. So problem number one is that uh, the only way right now to start the services is manually, which is kind of pain in the ass, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add Docker files to all of them. And uh, I'm going to use um, node image, uh, I believe. There is, I wonder if there's, I think there was an example, right? Uh, no, there is no example. Um, oh, there, there is on build thing, right? So we can just copy that stuff and uh, tweak it as needed. You can say node nine, uh, do we want nine? I think latest one is what, nine? Okay, whatever, let's just go with latest. That should work, I mean, nine is basically uh, mostly on improvements, like the performance improvements, right? Okay. Um, first of all, I guess it would be better if we go one by one. So let me go into for P processing service. Because I remember that we did this thing where we just thought, okay, you know, for now, we just ignore all the configuration and hard code it. Uh, but now is basically time to change that. So there we go. That's the first thing we need to configure. Um, so this is going to be process. And so we're basically going to pass all the configuration through the environmental variables so that when we start the service using Docker, we can just pass in whatever we want. Going to call it rabbit host. And um, this case, whoops, wrong button. Come on. I'm gonna say this is gonna be process and um, coronal p URL. Okay, we got that. Do we need anything else in here? Let's have a quick look. So we don't really have anything in index. Tests don't really matter. Um, this doesn't really do anything. And coronal p uses the config, right? So that should be it. Uh, now. Docker file. So we make a dir. We set it to work dir. We set the environment. Um, Guess we can just say, uh, I believe it was like this, right? So you can say default, yeah, it's going to be production. We copy that npm install. Um, we can do yarn install in this case. And um, was it yarn cache clean? Yeah. And okay, yeah, so we can do yarn install and then yarn cache clean. We don't need force in this case. I'm gonna just do yarn start. And that should be our Docker file, right? Uh, we do have the start script here. Yeah, so that should basically fix it. And uh, let us commit that. So we, uh, oh, right, I'm not folder, kernel p. It add so config and Docker file, commit. So uh, dockerize kernel p service and uh, allow configuring it using uh, nvars, right? So that's what we need. That is kernel p. So we shall continue with dbpedia. Uh, so basically, we need to do that for all of the services. I mean, it's not a very long process, but still. So in this case, we only want rabbit thing. Um, I'm gonna break that here. So it's gonna be process and rabbit host. Um, that was what I called it the first time, right? I always have these problems with forgetting how exactly did I name it, so, but it has to be consistent. So, okay, that looks good. Um, yeah, and we can just copy basically uh, Docker file. Uh, whoops, that that's not how you copy it. Thanks. Good thing the permission is denied. <laughs> um, okay, Docker file config. So we dockerize uh, dbpedia service, yes, okay. The new real quick uh, fixtures doesn't matter. So Fox, uh, here we'll have two URIs, right? In this case, uh, we are interested in um, host, this is going to be process and rabbit hosts or this is going to be process and uh, box URL or this. 
That looks good. Again, copy Docker file. Um, it's it's all exactly the same, right? So Docker file is not exactly sophisticated in this case. Um, config. So commit Dockerize uh, Fox service. There we go. Next one is keywords. Uh, I don't think we actually need any config in here, if I remember correctly. Oh no, we do need the RabbitMQ at least, right? Process and Rabbit uh, host or localhost. Copy Docker file and that's it, right? So we don't really pass any other config in. Yeah, this one is super straightforward. File config, commit, and Keyword service, right, okay. I mean, you know, this is not exactly the fun bit, but uh, we have to do that at some point and uh, it's better to do it now so we can create um, Docker Compose file next and just start the whole thing uh, with one simple command. Okay, um, let me think. So here we actually didn't move anything into config and that's not very good. So let us create a config yes file. Yes, we can just copy, uh, uh, yeah, config JS here and then Docker file here. And in this case, um, let's see. So what are we, are we gonna say const config require config, right? This is our config file. And uh, what exactly, so we need this config rabbit. This is the first thing we definitely need. Uh, this is gonna be ID, I guess. Yeah, let's 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 unify it. Let's make everything type input. I don't know if we need that config. Yeah, I don't think we dispatch the status for input services, right? So this is gonna be config uh, result key. Um, store it was right. Just quickly check um, store. Yes, exactly. So we don't need kernel p here, and everything else looks fine. Okay, git adds source config. I uh, know source config and Docker file. Okay, git commit dockerize uh, input service. Right. Um, storage service, and we have we have two more. Okay, this one. Um, let's see. Storage service would need uh, again. Okay, I did the same thing again. So we don't have config file here, which is not particularly nice. Let us copy it from here. So this is gonna be um, ID is gonna be. I guess we don't care. I mean, let's just make it for consistency. Storage. So we're gonna have that result key doesn't have one. Okay, um, config require config, right? And in this case, this is going to be config rabbit. And this is all fine. This is fine. So we have a MongoDB connection, which should also be defined in config, right? So this, uh, there it is. Okay. Um, const config require config, right? Uh, packages and this is going to be there's the config exports mongo url i'm going to do this so we're going to say config mongo url and in here we're going to say it's either going to be uh, the default value or it's going to be process and mongo url oops there we go um that looks good hi there we go. Okay. Right. Um, let's see. So we got that. We got that. So it should be theoretically, it should be working. Okay, right. So again, Docker file. Um, yes, Docker file is good. Git adds a source config Docker file. Okay, Dockerize uh, storage service. And now there's only one left, which is a summary. So I'm going to close that in the summary service. And uh, in this case, um, summarization was using the node module as well, right? So the only bit that we need to fix is essentially this. 
process and no what oh what the and um rabbit host or localhost there we go okay and copy docker file and uh, we are actually done so nothing too complicated with this just some boring work that you have to do at some point um summary right okay so now that we have all the services dockerized we go to the parent folder and we are going to build um docker compose file that will actually start all of that uh docker compose yaml right want and now it's going to take some time to do that because um first of all i always forget the compose notation so i'm gonna Google the Docker Compose file and uh, copy the example from there and then modify it. <laughs> because this is the simplest way of doing it, right? You, you never remember all that stuff. Uh, version two, I guess we can go with version three. I don't know, do we need version three actually? I'm not sure, yes, version three, thank you very much. Um, example Compose version three, there we go. Services and then, yeah, okay. So first of all, we need uh, RabbitMQ, right? So we're gonna say it's gonna be called Rabbit. Image is gonna be Docker Images App Rabbit. What was it called? RabbitMQ, yes. RabbitMQ, and since we're running it locally, I'm gonna say it's gonna be RabbitMQ Management so that we are actually, um, uh, we can actually see uh, what's going on there? So I'm going to show you in a second how that works. I think RabbitMQ. We need. Um, I want to have a look at the ports here really quick. So management, yes, uh, yeah, whatever management plugin. So the port is one. Yeah, okay. I'm going to forward this port to. Um, I mean, yeah, why not? Let's just forward it to the same port so that we don't really use it. We don't care about this bits. And we don't care about internal ports because it exposes the port that our services need to communicate with it anyway, right? So um, this is going to be supplementary services. Uh, and I think they're going to be below, right? For easy. It's going to be our services. Uh, let's let's split it. There's gonna be processing services, and first we're gonna say kernel p. So this is gonna be kernel p, right? And it's gonna be build. So um, when you don't have an image, you can just say Docker Compose, hey, build this folder. It's gonna be kernel p processing service, right? I think we actually don't need version three, so we might as well go with two. Okay, um, we need to build it and then we need to give an environment which will be, there's our config file. So we need rabbit host, which will in this case be rabbit because this is the name of the thing in, in, internally in the rabbit um, in the Docker Compose file. And we need kernel p URL, um, which will be this, but it's gonna be kernel p, right? And uh, we're gonna have to start kernel p service. So kernel p, uh, let's call it processing service, so that you know it's more explicit. Call it daemon, and this is gonna be daemon again, and it's gonna be kernel p, uh, kernel p. Call it kernel p svc. Just append svc at the end to differentiate them somehow okay which one did we use for kernel p here it was this uh one and we don't really need to provide any parameters to it okay now we added kernel p the next thing we need to do is to add um ebpedia uh, enrichment service so I guess what service, there we go. This can be at the end, right? So dbpedia uh, built, we're gonna build pedia service, uh, environment, oh, not file. I mean, 
theoretically we could have a file that would contain the for example rabbit host for all of them but uh, easy to do that so we're just gonna write it manually do we need to give any other configs to this one not really okay good so it's just gonna be this i'm gonna leave the enrichment service at the very bottom so we did the dbpedia we can do fox right fox processing service okay um built fox processing service uh environments um rabbit post rabbit and uh, we need to provide the fox url right so fox url is this so this is gonna be fox and we're gonna instantiate the fox here so fox right Oh boy, my computer is gonna die from all of that because that is way too many things to run at once, but whatever, let's let's see how that goes. So we're gonna run image. Another thing we need any special parameters for it. So let's see, ah uh, yeah, it's clashing name. So it's gonna be Fox SVC. Got the Fox, um, we need next what keywords, right? Keywords, builds, um, keywords, Processing service requirements is gonna be rabbit host. Oh, come on, rabbit. And uh, I don't think we need anything else here. Yeah, we're not. Okay, good. Name it real quick. So, keywords processing service. Go. So, next one would be summary service, right? Summary processing service. And I'm going to say summary build uh, summary processing service. Environment is going to be just the rabbit, right? Because I don't think we need anything else in here. Yeah, we don't. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, good. Okay, so we got that. Uh, we need now storage service. So it's gonna be storage service on storage is gonna be built basically store uh, storage service and environment gonna be first of uh, come on first of all it's gonna be rabbit and then I think we need to give it a Mongo right yeah. Copy that bit, mongo URL equals mongo, gonna be mongo data science and is not required. So, and then we need uh, mongodb daemon and it's gonna be mongo image. We're just gonna copy it from package JSON because why the hell not? Um, okay, so image mongo latest, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we can just leave it out since we're using that. And we need a volume, right? So in this case, volumes. Um, I mean, we need a volume because we want to persist the data that we're actually going to get. So I'm going to copy that bit. Um, I'm going to say dot uh, fixtures slash db. So we're going to store it in fixtures. And um, that's basically so this is the store did i miss something oh yeah input service right okay so we got the mongo and then to the doom input service or, i mean all it service says because theoretically there can be more than one right so open critic build um open critic service environment is gonna be I think it only needs rabbit right yeah it only needs rabbit here and it's gonna be rabbit and uh, we're actually done what I'm thinking is what we can do to test it we can expose uh, rabbit so what was the port again five six seven two right so we can expose the port locally and then just use one of those test scripts that we ran before to connect it and, and uh, initiate the um, basically initiate the processing right now okay um, now that is something that's gonna take some time so I'm gonna say 
build minus minus pool. And oh, uh, maybe that, wait a second, right. That was a bad idea because we need to add uh, docker ignore files, right? That will ignore node modules. And um, we need to ignore anything else? I think no. So basically copy kernel p docker ignore into dbpedia into Oops, wrong button. Go into Fox, into Keywords, to Open Critic, Storage, uh, Summary, and uh, yeah, and, and here as well, right? Because we actually want to ignore dot Git because we don't really need the whole Git thing in there. Okay, docker compose uh, build minus pull. Now it should be significantly faster because it won't really uh, download the, or at least the, it won't really push the whole mod modules folder every time to the docker daemon because, you know, we're running yarn install anyway. So that is, uh, now it's pulling the latest image because I provided the minus minus pull. Um, I think I have a severely outdated node image, like 8.1 or 8.2 maybe in my system. So it's good that it's pulling the 9.1, nine, uh, nine I believe the latest one is. So uh, yeah, it's gonna take some time to build. Uh, the plus is that uh, you're using node nine, which is not supported. Oh no. Okay, maybe we should have, um, as, uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, that's not very nice. Let us change it to nodes LTS. What is the um, Docker nodes? I mean, I guess, yeah, I've heard that there was problems with nine. That's why it's not released to the um, um, to the homebrew, for example, yet. Okay, so we can go with uh, eight or carbon, I guess, right? Carbon sounds good. So we can just do that. And uh, let's update that in all files. Slightly pain in ass. Um, once again, we, well, whoops, we could have created like some sort of a hierarchy of Docker files, but again, too lazy for that. It is easier to just manually replace everything because that is how laziness works. You twice for everything. <laughs> okay, um, summary. I think this is the last one, right? Uh, no, storage, carbon, yeah, much. Okay, I think we're good. Collapse everything and um, uh, yeah, good. Docker images, let's see, I have a bunch of stuff here. Um, remove prep, docker compose, build minus pull, there we go. Okay, so now it should pull the 8.9, which I have installed in my system essentially, and that should be way better. And I guess Yarn won't really complain about that. Let me turn off my amp on another machine so that I don't hear different blips. Okay, come on. So again, you know, since we're like building it first time, it's gonna take some time. I mean, it's not that actually slow. So since we're running microservices, there's not that many dependencies and they are um, running pretty damn fast. So, okay, Cheerio model is now available. Okay, there's some outdated modules. Uh, maybe we should, we should see if we can um, update the modules. Maybe there are some new stuff uh, there. But basically once it finishes building, we can start that and uh, trigger Processing, uh, let me think. So I think we had a test script here that said, yeah, destiny two, for example. That's a good example. Why not? Let's let's go with that. So this now is gonna generate a bunch of images that um yeah, C3 data science. So there are Fox, Open Critic, Cornel P, so there's gonna be a bunch more. And uh, basically after that, we're gonna start them from images and we're only gonna need to rebuild them once we need to fix something or change something or update dependencies, for example, right? 
uh, in theory, you would want to set up a continuous uh, integration pipeline that would build the images for you and push them to the registry, be it you know private, public, whatever. So uh, you wouldn't actually need to do all of that yourself every time unless you are like uh, developing locally, but then you usually limit yourself to one service. That does save quite a lot of time. Uh, meanwhile, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat. I'm looking there sometimes, so you know. I can see there's uh, quite a lot of people watching today, actually. Thank you for coming. Okay, uh, yeah, let's use the input thing. So I guess I'll open another terminal for now. Uh, and go into input. Yeah. And uh, TJS. Yes, there we go. Yeah, okay, so local hosts, that should work. And yeah, okay, cool. So theoretically, cool, it's done. It is done building. So if we have a look at the images, we now have all of them here. Now, um, there's a bunch of problems with just starting that. So um, what I'm gonna do to lessen the stress on my system is I'm gonna run them in batches. So first, I'm gonna say up minus D box coronal P Mongo and rabbit. I'm gonna start only four services, right? So they're gonna start as demons. And I'm gonna wait a bit um, until they actually spin up because you know, like for example, Fox or Coronal P, they're all Java services and they take quite a lot of time to actually start. So uh, we're gonna wait a bit until this logging stops so that my system doesn't die from running all of this stuff in the background. I mean, I can almost hear my computer lifting off right now, but uh, hopefully that's not on the microphone. I try to, you know, defeat that as much as possible. But uh, yeah, it, it is trying to lift off right now because running Java apps is pretty heavy task, especially in natural language processing Java tools. Okay, come on. We initialized a bunch of stuff. Okay, um, let's have a look like this. So let's see, coronal, um, yeah, coronal P, coronal P started, rabbit, I think started, uh, Mongo, I mean, Mongo is probably the lightest one. Yeah, so the Fox is essentially the one left and it started, cool. So now I have all of them started, so we can say docker compose up minus T. Now we can start, um, I guess, storage, yeah. And, uh, Okay, so storage is now running and consuming and there are no errors, which means it's successfully connected to Mongo. We can check that by uh, having a look at the MongoDB. There we go, one more connection. That was good. Right, so now we can start uh, everything else because why the hell not? There you go. Say logs minus F, we should now see a bunch of pretty stuff. Um, I guess sorts them by um, different means not exactly by time. So, but yeah, there's, there's, there's stuff running. Okay, now just to make sure that everything is good. All of them are up, all of them are running, which means nothing broke. Um, yeah, that was not good. Uh, let's do tail 10. So just get last messages. Cool, so we now actually have all of that stuff. And uh, theoretically, if I run this now, so it's send it to open critic, we should see, um, things that start to happen here right now, right? So there we go, there's the storage updating documents, there's the Fox calculating and extracting entities, the storage updating more stuff. Okay. Uh... Right, let's see if that actually that seems to be working. So nothing crashed so far, that's a good sign. <laughs> uh, that's basically what you see right now is the whole pipeline working as it is supposed to, right? So um, obviously Fox is quite verbose here and uh, logs a lot of things uh, here that it's basically doing under the hood, which we don't really wanna see here. But you know, in any case, I don't really remember how you properly disable the verbose login there. There is a way to say that, you know, just log me like critical stuff, but whatever. So that works. We're gonna wait until um, it gathers all the documents and it gathers all the 
basically does all the enrichments and summaries and everything. That shouldn't take too long. I mean, Destiny do have quite a significant number of updates, but we take um, one second per request. So, you know, that should be fine. Should take a few minutes, I guess, to do that. Uh, we can actually try to, if my, oh my God. Okay, no, <laughs> you know what? I won't touch anything because apparently encoding video and uh, running so much processing in the background kind of kills my computer. So I'm gonna just sit here and wait. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but uh, by the end of this uh, pipeline, we should have a nice, um, I would say small, but it should be a quite significant actually database of stuff that uh, we can use to build a UI in REST. Okay, that is a lot of logging. Um, you know what? I might just break that and say docker logs minus F um, storage. So we can just look at the storage stuff and uh, wait until that stops, right? So there you go. So there's some updates, enrichments going on. Okay, let's see how long that takes. It's gonna be probably, as I said, a few minutes. I mean, Destiny 2 is a, you know, pretty popular game. And there is a significant number of reviews for it. Okay. I actually would have started the, for example, the RoboMongo or some other Mongo UI that uh, would show us the database, but I'm afraid my computer will blow up from the <laughs> all the stuff that is actually happening in the background. <laughs> and actually start HTOP and have a look at the CPU load is just over the top. <laughs> it's actually not 100% on all cores, which is, uh, you know, really great. And I still have some RAM left. Not even swapping that much yet. Is you know surprising actually, I would say. Okay, that's not not even that bad. I thought it would be worse. All right, is it done yet? Updating, updating, yes. Okay, there are some enrich I guess enrichment would probably be longest because we're using DBpedia for enrichment and uh it is not exactly known for its uh, very stable public endpoint. So, um, hey, yeah, welcome to the stream. Um, as you can see so far, it's going really well. We've launched the whole pipeline in Docker Compose and it's running and taking ages to do so. Um, I am actually just real, yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, but yeah, I was saying that DBPDA is not exactly known for its stability and uh, if you would uh, do, if you would run something like this in production with like, you know, business backing it up, you would actually take the dumps that they provide and run your own local instance. Because even for research, sometimes it's not viable using public endpoint. <laughs> it can be such a pain in ass. All right. Um, how many articles does it have? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go to open critic, or at least I'm gonna try. And I'm gonna go, I think it was a URI. Oh Jesus, that is so slow. It was a URI for destiny in my history. Let's see, 115 reviews. So that is about two minutes and then it's gonna be a few more minutes for for updates. Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, let's, let's wait for all of them, why not? There's gonna be a nice bunch of data that we're gonna be able to visualize in a bunch of different ways. So I guess those the um, updates that come immediately is probably the summary and keywords because they use the node modules that are pretty quick. And then everything else that come later is probably Fox and uh, Coronal P because those are taking a bit longer, right? Because they, I mean, they take significant time to run through. I'm also wondering if it makes any sense to actually show the scores and maybe try to make, because I mean, we do have the scores from the official OpenCritic data, right? 
So we try to have a look at the sentiments and uh, keywords and try to correlate scores to those and see if there's really any correlation or they just randomly assign scores, for example. That was always, you know, one of the amusing things about the game reviews is when you read the review and the guy is not super positive about the video game. He's like, yeah, it has these problems and that problem. And then it's scrolled down and there's like score there and it's like seven out of 10. And you're like, what the hell is going on here? All right, 94. Is there a way to have the IDs? Okay, let me see. Uh, critics. Uh, my browser, please don't die. Okay, I guess they are sorted in the same way. So if we scroll to the very bottom and try to inspect that, please don't die. Um, is there a way to have a look? I guess we can just have a look at the network and then look at the JSON, right? HR game ID. There we go. There's our API. Come on. Okay, reviews. There you go, 155. And the last one is 94 to 155. So we're almost done. Okay, cool. So yeah, there you go. We're literally done now with fetching new reviews. So now we just need to wait a bit until all the processing is done. And uh, we have our nice, I guess I'll just, uh, if the database is not too large, I'll just commit it to the uh, repository so that we have some test data to work on, you know, without any major issues or uh, rerunning the whole thing again, because as you've seen, that's not exactly the fun part. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we need to wait until that stops, which again, the only services that are very cost intensive is Fox and Cornell P and DBpedia. Okay, DBpedia is not exactly cost intensive, but rather uh, request slow because sparkly, public sparkly endpoint is, you know, as you might imagine, gets hammered pretty, pretty heavily. So it might not uh, respond so quickly. Okay. I guess now that we actually have a bit more or a bit less going in the background, we can try to start RoboMongo. Connect to our local. Oh, I forgot to expose the port, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Okay, we can. We can say ports. I mean, obviously, I won't do anything right now. But at least um, after restart, that is uh, nav Mongo. Where is my storage service? At least after restart, this is going to be something that uh, you know you can actually easily do. Okay. Um, I do know German to some extent, let's put it this way. So it's like enough for everyday life and shops and, you know, talking to authorities and stuff like this. But I, if we're talking technical stuff, that's usually too complicated. <laughs> um, but what I find amusing about the technical German is that you guys, uh, or Germans anyway, use like 50% English words in the programmers at least, you know, discussions anyway. So it's like very easy to understand this, let's say it this way. Come on. All right, I think we're almost there, if not completely there. Should not be that many documents left to process by now. I mean, there's like 150, so a few more minutes at best, or at worst, I guess. Rest, we got that. And actually have a look at the fixtures database right now, so See how much 300 megs. I mean, that's a bit too much for Git repo, but uh, I think we can force the Mongo to compact it and then it's going to be a bit better. But let's see how it ends up. Um, wait, what's actually the Git, GitHub repo size limit? Is there any limit? Because I mean, it's an open repo and uh, 
The limit is easy to blah, blah, blah. If your repository is 1 GB, you might receive applied email from GitHub support, reduce the size. Okay. So 1 GB per repo and 100 megabyte per file. Um, see, I guess there is 11 megs. Uh, okay, so I mean, the actually the collection is not that big. What the hell does take so much space? Gnostics data? No, this is not big in a journal. Is that okay? Wait, what? Art Tiger log. The, the logging takes so much space. For real, right now. That is okay. Um, you know what? While we're looking at it, I haven't actually ventured into the MongoDB. Uh, databases dumps and you know figuring out how to minimize the size so wait a second let's let's have a look what is would it be uh the older journal let's have a look what is this exactly do we even journaling so just use a journal size of 100 right um no, 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 log mentioned this uh, right ahead log and not the mongodb log file okay so this is not the logging but this is a uh, log file journal file yeah okay um i guess it is important and uh hmm. i wonder if we just compress it into zip and then throw it in uh, snappy but good 20 bytes so okay so size of 100 megabytes okay okay so there's journal files and they are definitely needed well i mean i guess we can just pack it right okay so it seems like we're done with processing and only enrichment is left uh let me have a look uh yeah i mean germans love coming up with their own words if even you know even for technical stuff like the first time i heard the um past tense uh, get downloaded that was just ridiculous <laughs> still makes me you know cranks me up especially when you hear stuff like you know get skyped get downloaded and all this kind of stuff <laughs> right okay come on enrichment i know you can do that okay my computer finally stopped trying to fly away i guess that basically because all the java stuff is stopped so we're not waiting for dbpedia we do want to wait for all of that uh i don't think there's that many entities that are need to be like enriched but uh yeah let's just wait a few more minutes uh, is it safe to delete journal file i assume it is not you have two options use small files startup ah, or no journal option in production is very bad idea okay no okay yeah yeah, yeah. i mean deleting it is yeah okay i mean we can try to pass small files maybe or no journal i guess no journal in this case maybe in this case is fine okay whatever yeah. 300 megs is not that much and i i'm sure we can pack it i guess it's not going to be larger than 300 megabytes right because this is, i mean the whole the database should be like a few megabytes on it because there's like 100 articles in json is text get hacked yeah i mean yeah that is also a word I've heard. <laughs> Come on, DBPDA, give us our data. I'm actually surprised by the fact that they released node nine and neither NPM nor yarn actually work with it properly, which is like, I, I mean, you know, the node nine has a lot of really cool improvements and the, like the speed improvement specifically for the promises and in a uh, bunch of VS6 features, but you cannot use it because NPM and yarn doesn't work with it. So, okay, I guess I'll just wait. <laughs> Come on, are we done? Is that it? No, come on. 
All right, I cannot start Robomonger to... Oh, you know what? Uh, there was a nifty thing that I saw recently in uh, one of the Microsoft um, Visual Studio Code tweets. It's called CosmoDB, and I'm going to install it right now. It's an official uh, Microsoft extension that allows you to um, connect to MongoDB directly from uh, VS Code and interact with it by running queries in sort of, you know, kind of um, playground style, I guess. Reload that. And uh, db die. That, yeah, so there's the... Yeah, so basically they made it for Azure uh, initially that they have this Cosmos DB thing, which is essentially cloud MongoDB. But you can also attach to the local MongoDB thing, which uh, is something I want to try because if I can remove another app from my computer and just use uh, VS Code for that, that is always great. Okay, come on. Is that it? Are we done? It looks like we are, no, come on. I was just about to say we're done. Stop doing that. Yeah, I guess some of them are just plain out empty. And come on. Uh, once again, you know, if you're, if we're talking about running that stuff in production, uh, you wouldn't want to have all those delays, right? So where wherever possible, you would actually run the local instances of those uh, services. Well, aside from scraping, I guess, because there's no way you can run a local instance of that. Um, but, you know, there's other ways around it. But basically, yeah, you want to run as much as possible within your infrastructure so that you don't have to wait seconds, minutes, whatever, for the remote services and rely on the remote services to actually work. Because this is not a very good business decision, essentially. Come on, are we done? No, we're not. Okay, uh, meanwhile, what can we do here? Um, I guess, so we installed Fastify, so um, I had, uh, this is a view thing, this is a rest, right? So we can, we can start creating a simple structure in here. Why not? So we're gonna create here, it's gonna be start server, it's gonna do it the same way. Uh, I have to actually read how you test Fastify because I have no idea. Okay, um, let's see, Fastify, yeah, there you go. I'm gonna copy that. Um, yeah, you can be this, and this is gonna be module export. So this is gonna be our main function, right? Yeah, and Fastify listen 300. So if it's an error, we're gonna throw. If not, server listening on. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Maybe uh, so uh, unknown. Yeah, okay. Start off with your unknown words. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. That's all great and stuff. Um, the cool thing about Fastify is it actually supports um, most of the if not all, if I understood correctly, of Express.js uh, modules so that you can actually just take them and, and plug them into Fastify. Okay, um, middleware logs, hooking, getting started. Why not? Let's, let's go with getting started, why not? So yeah, I understand that bit. So there is options. That's interesting. Truly, we can serialize responses according to JSON schema. That's interesting. Okay, so you can actually. Uh huh. Okay. So it has validation integrated. That's really cool. I mean, like Happy and Core does this as well, but uh, if it's faster than them, it still provides validation. That's really cool. Register, and then you can. Lead the roots into separate files. Cool. Now this is the approach I do like. Okay. Let us do this. So, um, yes, let's create a roots folder. Roots. This in yes, right. So it's gonna module exports. There's gonna be an array of roots here. 
uh, this is exactly what you pass into the register function, right? And then it's going to be home roots require just create a simple server and see it's going to be home roots. There we go. Okay, and then this means here. Um, I mean, I guess we can leave it like this, right? So get our roots. Uh, require um, roots, right? And then register our roots. And it's going to be fastify. How does it work? Register and an array and then. So this is going to be array roots bleh, and opts. What is opts? What do we pass there? Hello world, something true. Um, oh, the the options are passed to the roots. Okay, so we don't care about that now. I can just do this. And if error, we just rethrow it. Yes, that works. Why not? Okay, are we done yet? Um, and each root should be module exports. Okay, so we need home.js here. That actually makes for a very nice uh, layout. Very nice structure of the project, right? So there's always something that annoyed me to like quite a long, long time when I was working with Express, for example, because you always had this issues with um, structuring the project. Okay, uh, so we got that. Package JSON starts. Uh, I was interested how you test that stuff. Right, so uh, are we done? Okay, let me wait it just a bit more. Let's do yarn start here. 3000 yes uh, okay so it's going to be the same port which is not what we want so let's change it to now you know what i actually would leave the server on 3000 then change view or next um starting from scratch is there a way to say that i want to port 8080 uh yeah okay configuration there we go Oh, dev integration, uh, blah, 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 process and port. Okay, so I guess we can just do this, right? That should make it work. Uh, yar dev, yes. As it takes, yeah, okay, so that's 8080. Okay, good. So we got both uh, boilerplate and looks like we're finished. Cool. So I can say docker compose stop. It's gonna gracefully stop all our services, which I imagine is gonna... Uh, hey Renato, yeah, I thought I would give a Festify a try. I wanna use it in one of my projects and uh, it looks really cool. I mean, you know, it's React compatible, it's fast, oh, sorry, Express compatible. It's faster, it's smaller, and it has a bunch of really cool features that uh, I do wanna look into. Okay, so this stopping is gonna take some time. There you go. Okay, good. We're now stopped. Almost. Come on, Fox. I I know you don't want to die. There you go. Okay. So remove that. Uh, clean out everything. We should now have a nice clean Docker. There we go. Okay. So uh, now we have this DB, which I guess I get three hundred megs is. Um, what we are gonna do is, I guess, just zip it. I guess that should deflate it quite significantly because I mean, there's not that much stuff in there, right? 40 megs, cool. So I'm gonna add it as a zip to the repository so that you guys can just unzip it and try it out. Oh, you already used it, cool. Um, all right, I mean, I'm, I'm really looking forward to trying it out as well because it looks cool as hell. They are almost uh, at 1.0, by the way. So they have a ticket that uh, is, you know, saying that they're gonna release 1.0 quite soon. Right, okay. So as I was saying, I'm gonna add the DB here and um, I'm gonna ignore the DB folder. Fixtures DB slash. 
Yes, okay. Um add Docker or ignore. Add uh yeah, I guess yes, add coronal P yeah um docker compose fixtures db zip okay git add fox keywords um open critic storage oops storage service add summary okay cool so this basically will be complete pipeline with compose and a simple db dump, right? Um, add way start complete pipeline using compose and add a sample db dump archive. Okay, cool. We got that. Now we can actually, uh, first of all, we need to, the rest is relies on the MongoDB. So we need to, I guess, put the Mongo volume here. Volume. I'm gonna be lazy. I'm gonna just copy somewhere here. And it's in storage service, right? So we can just that and oh, whoops, no. So we can say volume docker run mongo yeah and i guess in this case i'm just gonna okay so we already have rest open here so i'm gonna move the fixtures do i need to move it no i don't need to move it right? so it is gonna be this first is that gonna work a good question Yes, Mongo, and it seems to be working actually. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let's try this. Um, wait, wait, what? Where's my Cosmo? Oh, I guess I need to kill and restart all the code. So only reloads first instance. That's the... okay. Ah, there we go. Cosmos DB. Um, on load already. No, attach Mongo, yes, so MongoDB, localhost, there we go. Hey, we have our data science thing and we have our articles. And uh, this is, you get JSON. We got all our data here, nice and easy. I Okay, that extension is pretty neat. <laughs> I basically don't need RoboMongo anymore. And we have all the data right here in, in JSON. So I guess it is paginated, right? Like that can be all, no, it actually can be all 150 things, like 8,000 lines. Okay, don't save it. No, thank you very much. I don't really need to save that. Uh, I think there's basically, there was a way, Cosmos DB, Mongo Scrapbook. Yeah, that was the thing. I have no idea how that works actually, but, um, Okay, I guess we can investigate that later, whatever. We don't really need that now. So what we need to do is we need to uh, actually connect MongoDB. So I'm gonna be lazy. I'm gonna just open the storage service and copy the Mongo beats from here. Okay, um, let me think. First of all, we need uh, Mongoose, right? And R, Yarn, Odd, Mongoose. Uh, what I'm thinking is we might just get all the articles at once uh, per game and then just process them on the client side. I don't know if that's gonna be too much data. We're gonna check out in a second. So we're gonna copy our DB thing here. I'm um, gonna be DB folder and it's gonna be index.js. Yes. So we don't need, yeah, we do need a config, right? It's gonna be like this. Yes, and I'm gonna take the config here and I'm just gonna copy the... Okay, we get the config, we connect. Um, so I'm gonna create, so basically in this case, since we're only reading, I don't really care about schema. So I'm gonna say we have a dummy schema. 
that is just this. Since we're not going to be writing, I'm not going to say strict false. And uh, it's going to be dummy schema, right? So because we don't really care about schema right now. Okay. Um, we got the DB, we got the home. Uh, so this is going to be hello world. Yes, why not? And then it's going to be game.js. So we're going to take that. And it's going to be get game and then ID. I assume Testify has the same way of handling stuff as uh, okay, roots. Yeah, I guess roots is what we want. Let's see. So we don't care about schema right now. We might try to add it later on. Uh, get get user handlers uh prefix we want pre okay it even has prefix support okay that is right oh, okay <laughs> that is actually very cool um life cycle is there middleware logging no uh can i get partial partial okay where's the docs i need partial uri so i need the should be in the rules, right? I thought URL, uh, fast match URL. Fine, uh, the routing is handled by find my way. Okay, so we just use this thing here and uh, get, and how do I do partials? User ID, okay, so you can do that. And then you get request uh, response params. And I guess in params, you will get the user ID, right? So, by params and uh, the params. Let's just reply with params because I'll not. So uh, yarn start. Just to make sure I understand correctly how that works. Game three. I was code not found uh, because I forgot to add it to the roots. Right. Uh, game roots uh, require. I mean, I guess you can also automate that if I want to. I think let's just roll with whatever. Oh, what? This? It's empty. Okay. Why? Um, RMs? It's param. I don't need to validate params. Request. Oh, I guess maybe it's in a request. Because the last thing is done, so I guess it's not there. Maybe it's added as a request. Uh, request is not defined. Oh. Whoops. Uh, string. Okay, it cannot stringify it because it's. Um, yeah. Okay. Param. That should work. Is that how it works? Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So we say that we get params, we get ID from request, right? So we destruct that. And uh, okay, in this case, um, do, 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 let's see. So we got our data science thing. I'm on articles again. Uh, how do we link? Uh, so it has the, do we actually link it to the game in any way? Is that something I completely forgot and we have no way of matching it? That's gonna be a bummer. I don't wanna rerun the whole thing again. Oh no. Oh no, game ID, there you go, okay. <laughs> I got scared for a second there. I was like, okay, yeah, that's not gonna be way well. It's not gonna go too well. I mean, it's not that it's gonna take ages to rerun, but uh, it's a waste of time essentially. So try not to screw up this way and check beforehand. I sometimes, I, I mean, I did that a few times. Okay, um, which means we need a DB here. Okay, um, and we actually, article, right? Uh, we actually want to wait for the DB before we start the server here. Uh, get db right so const uh, we don't really need db itself there is this connected to the promise that we need 
wait for db and then there's going to be a sync wait connect db and then run the server right okay so then we connect it we get post that um okay that actually should be a sync now here's the question does fastify handle promises I saw a sync somewhere. Looks like it does. Think wait. We have you covered. You can just return stuff. Oh man, okay, that is awesome. Okay. Articles. Await. Oh, Article finds um what it was. Game ID. I guess it would make sense to actually build an, an index uh, on the game ID, but uh, in this case, I, I mean, the database is directly. So basically, if we would run that in production, you would want to build an index uh, by game ID so that their queries like this will go faster because, you know, over a few hundred thousand entries, this query without index is going to take quite some time. You would be surprised. Okay, so theoretically, if I now run this, we should uh, empty JSON. Okay, why? Oh, I am very surprised. Um, let me try this. And work. Yeah, that works. Um. Am I doing this correctly? Is it game ID is a direct prop of our uh, article, right? Yes, game ID. Is it because it's parse and not an integer? Is that what you want? Yeah, okay, there we go. So I guess now um, it's actually a good point to create a schema now. Because um, Article schema, game ID is number. And uh, we can say that it's a number and uh, index true. You know, why not? Let's, let's build an index. Uh, I screwed up by doing that. Whoops. Um, yeah, okay, I guess. Mongo is now it whoops not storage. Yes, Mongo right. Okay, um that thing seems to be pretty yeah, okay. 25 megs. Not exactly what we want to have in our <laughs> client side data, aren't we? Okay, so here we go with optimizations. So we got a bunch of fields that we don't really need, right? So the easiest way to go about it is to um, trim out the fields. Um, Highwise, uh, I mean, we've built the test data and now are building the REST thing, REST interface using the Fastify and now trying to trim the 26 megabytes of uh, JSON data into something a bit smaller. Right, so as I was saying, the easiest way is to just pick the fields that are interesting for you. So I'm gonna go with ID. Okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna const uh, fields to take. Let's call it this way. Ad one. Then I'm gonna say this is gonna be fields to take. Uh, so we need title. We need published uh, date. We need external URL. Um, snippet, why not? Snippet. Okay, let's see what else. Um, I guess author, maybe? Don't care about platform for now. We don't care about author's thing. We don't care about text. We can request it separately if needed. Come on, much stuff. Okay, um, blah, blah, blah. So we can get extracted keywords. I don't know if we need that. I mean, we have the separate keywords thing, right? 
I mean, I guess we can get them as well. So basically extracted keywords. One. Uh, canonical link image. Uh, we can get extracted image. Why not? Extracted image. We don't really care about the links. This is the text. Uh, we get the sam summary and we can get added date uh, we need keywords so key phrases locations uh, organizations and people In this case, we don't really care about DBpedia entity, or do we care about that? I mean, I guess we can ask for them separately. But we want sentiments and total sentiments, value and total sentiment. Do we, no, we don't really want sentiments in the beginning, right? I think we can get them per request. Okay, um, so let me try to restart that. And now it should be a uh, few kilobytes, hopefully. Or can we probably find a fund defined? Uh, what did I screw up? Is it article schema now? No. Okay. That's a weird, VS Code decided to rename the stuff a bit weirdly. Okay, 657 kilobytes, 400 articles. Sounds reasonable, I guess. I mean, we're gonna see if we if we need that, uh, like all of that stuff. Um, now what we need is actually, so right now we're working with existing data, but we need a method to extract more, right? So, okay, first of all, let us commit what we did first. Um, okay, copy, copy, docker, ignore, whoops, here, docker, ignore, right, okay, git commit basic version of REST interface. Now, we need a method where we basically would one search for game because we don't like we we don't have the database of the games we take that from open critic right and we need a interface where we would be able to say hey process this game so that is gonna be so get will get us the information uh post let's call it process game yes post will uh process it actually right so it's gonna be Post ID, right? No, it's not ID. In this case, it should, um, it should post game. And Reku, I guess, uh, how do they do the body? Um, that's not what I want. So I'm interested in how do they do the post request? Request body, yes. This is the bo okay, so just request body going to be a body name right so we take the name and then in this case we're gonna have to connect to rabbitmq um call it you for example yes uh so we're gonna add a work right so we will basically connect to rabbitmq and then uh do exactly what I did in uh, in our test case. Greedy input. There we go. Uh, come on, where's my sublime? Yes, yeah, there you go. Okay, so we go micro work. Wait, there on, stop this stuff. And this is what we want to do, right? So we actually module words master. Okay. So, and here we wanna say 
um, on Q require RMQ, right? And then we just say RMQ problem critic game name. Okay. And we return status yes. Okay. Um, theoretically, that should work. Now, this is gonna process the game. Now we need to find the game. And this case is gonna be similar to process, but instead, find and it's gonna be name, but instead of uh, doing that, we're gonna. Uh, was it fetch or was it node fetch? Second, I think it was node fetch, right? So fetch is something else. Yeah, okay. Fetch, so there's gonna be node fetch. Okay, uh, and we're gonna fetch. Okay, now here's the question. This is storage. We don't care about that. Um, do, 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 do. What I want, I want open critic service. No, I actually don't care much about that right now. Maps, uh, get game. Okay, search. Ah, okay, so I already have this search here. So basically, we can and do that. And instead of returning top hit, we just return results. And we actually can tweak. We can tweak the open critic service to accept the ID of the game instead of just doing the search all over again to make it kind of faster. But I guess we can just leave it as is for now, right? So there's the search base. Now we need to plug in our const game process game root wire process game and uh, find game roots fire and game okay so process game root find game roots um let me think so if we start it now and um So theoretically, if we just go here and say fetch, you send a post request and fetch again, I keep forgetting. Um, fetch URL, the additional parameters you give to it. Just on fetch, uh, so it's gonna be, the URL is gonna be game find, right? And then Uh, yeah, you can now do top level of eight in here. So I think the body was name two. Uh, I forgot to close it. But I've updated my browser. Okay. I mean, I can, I can do without it. I thought they already rolled that feature out. Um, yeah. find internal error. Internal error, what do you write to me? Cast to number failed, find, uh, you casting to number, find game, rest. And, oh, because it, it overlaps with the other, you have to do find game this way. Yeah, because because the um, find becomes an ID for game slash ID, right? And it's, it just goes bonkers. Hmm. Yes, we can just go search, right? Are using, uh, I mean, we're, we're talking about games anyway, so 404, no, it's not 404 work. I plug it into the 
Roots. It is here, right? Trine game, Trine game, yes. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. Yes, it's running get. I thought post, is that what I'm forgetting? From his unsupported media type. Okay, now it's post. Why are you unsupported media type? Okay. The day when I remember how to do post and fetch will be the great, great day. Um, oh, post, come on. Method post body form. Right, okay. I think that was, you have to provide a head thing. Ah, method, method data, on stringify, okay. Have to stringify the data, is that how it works? Oh, uh, wait. Yeah, is that, is that correct? That body, yeah. That looks fine. Let's try to stringify it. No, it's the unsupported media type. I, what you don't like about my post? Headers? Yes, maybe if we provide headers, so it will like us more. Content type, application JSON. Processable entity. Unstringify. Uh. Stringify, yes. And like this. <gasps> okay. Works and a search return what we expected to. Yes, it does. Okay, so search now works too. Cool. Um, so we find we can trigger. And um, actually, we need to. Yeah, so. Is it. I don't have rabbit running right so why doesn't it an interesting point that's you uh so in this go okay um We should actually see the um, micro work connecting it because I oh I didn't save it also there we go okay now it works cool um so I mean I guess if we trigger we have destiny here ID this one localhost three thousand game was it close to the game? Okay, so I again. Um, legation JSON ID. This close to game. Uh, game undefined. Okay. Oh, name. Okay, will be name. okay this works as well cool so basically our very basic rest is kind of ready of course um so what did we do we added the micro work and search right odd way to search for games and request game processing Okay, so I mean, with this, I guess you could say that the very basic uh, REST API is kind of done. I can close this, at least, you know, for this stream, let's put it this way. I can close this and then we can focus on um, Nuxt. So I go to 8080. This is going to be our on. Right, so this is going to be our uh, Vue.js thing. Yeah, I have, I have DevTools sort of, uh, okay. So what we are gonna do now is, I guess, let me think, so no wait, this is open critical needs, I need, 
eyes here. No, this yeah, this is UI. Okay. Pages index view. Okay. Um, let us continue with this bit. Finally, get to the interesting parts. This config starting from scratch. Okay, directory structure, uh, assets, components, layouts, pages. Start with pages. So you got document, you got layout, you got page, and then you got optional child pages and optional components. Okay, that's pretty well thought out. Okay, uh, you can customize the main document to extend, create app HTML. And the, okay, so there's even a way to override the parents. Nice. You can get layouts and then put the nooks to where it will render. You can get the error page, custom layouts. That looks really awesome. Um, but okay, let us first let me see. So uh, pages. Okay, so this is how the page looks. At the template, we got the script sync data called every time before loading the component. Fetch. Fetch method is used to fill the store before rendering the page. Okay. Um, that metaphor. Okay. We don't care about this. Or loading the component. We care about that. Uh, so I guess if we do this and say name. Oh, was it double brackets? I think it was double. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So what we want to do here is we actually want to fetch. Um, okay, I'm going to be lazy again and hard code everything for now. So what was the idea of the game we used? Once post. Post. Jason, so const uh, 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 and stringify data. This and theoretically, oh. Okay. Tiny, why is it small? Uh, simply, ah, okay, it needs one root element. Uh, okay, let's do this one prettier. Why you are not, you don't know how to work with view? <gasps> Even has the loading bar. Okay, that is, this is actually really cool. What's going on? That fetch is not defined. How are you not? What? Wait, what? How is fetch not defined? There you go, there it is. Okay, now yes, next as fetch. Oh, I guess it wants the it runs it on the server, right? So um is a morphic uh fetch there was a basically it's the same problem with with nextjs so if you run it um basically it tries to fill and render the page on the server side and if you want to run the fetch you need the um, isomorphic fetch right Turn, uh, isomorphic fetch and we just need this bit um i guess this it Theoretically, good idea to restart the whole thing because we added the new package there. It's a very nice error log, by the way. It's like a lot of work has been put into this framework. I'm really digging it so far. Hey, there we go. So um, yeah, that JSON is kind of large, but okay. And there's like, yeah, okay. There's some problems there, obviously. Mismatch, I don't know. yeah, okay. That is that is obviously there's going to be a lot of problems, but uh, it fetches the data. Be without too many problems or errors. 
Looks like it does it server side, so I actually don't really load anything in the client side, which is great. So what we can do here is um, basically we can say, first of all, we can render the list of articles, right? Now, uh, one of the problems with view is the same as, you know, with any other uh, framework with a templating language is the fact that you cannot really write it in out of memory unless you use the templating language. So if you use something like React, Preact or whatever, you just use JavaScript for all the loops and everything. In this case, you actually have to look for all those binds, attributes and whatever and uh, directives. In this case, we want, where is conditional rendering events? Where's the loops? Your properties conditional rendering? Or v4, 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 yes, there we go. That's what I want. Uh, list rendering, guys. List rendering, and uh, this is what we, yeah, I guess we can do it. Um, so, whoops. Um, so, we're gonna say this is ul. I'm gonna say leave v4 article in data. Uh, add. A prettier doesn't seem to be able to format that, which is a bit of a pain in ass. Article title. Like about elements, the bind key. Where, oh, okay, so it, it also has this problem with uh, with keys. Same as React, I guess. There you go. Okay, so now we have a list of all articles. That is all articles, by the way. Um, da -da 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 -da, let me think. A H ref. So we can. E binds that is going to be href and going to be article. Was it? Uh, I can't even see the data here. But okay, obviously. Ah, oh, come on. Open that again and uh, external URL. Right, this is once. Theoretically, now it should be a list of articles with links. Yep, that's exactly it. Okay, so we got the basic structure for both. Um, it status. Uh, okay, it reset. So we don't need this next folder. That's um, ignore dot next. There you go. Mid add basic UI project and simple data render for destiny best data. So basically, we got everything prepared, and uh, I mean, it took actually longer than I expected it would, but um, we got everything prepared, and I guess in the next live stream, we can actually start working on a proper visualization and the UI and everything. Uh, but I've seen so far of the Fastify and Nukes are actually really great and there's like a lot of pretty cool uh, things going on. So I don't really need that bit. But uh, yeah, so um, I'm gonna, you know, clean up and commit all of that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in chat. I will have a look in a second. If not, then well, thank you very much for staying with me during this live stream and I hope uh, to see you next time. A um it commits remove unused styles and push. There we go. All right. Looks like there are no comments. Um yeah, I guess we're we're basically done for today. So once this is pushes, I'm gonna stop the live stream. Me um so that anymore close this as well yeah i guess it's like 40 megs and uh, most of them is actually the database dump right it was like big is it 43 megs yeah so it's like almost everything is a database dump
Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, looks like there's no questions. So thank you for watching and as usual, I see you next time. Bye.